Hi everyone. In this video, you are looking at high quality plans of the 74 gun Spanish warship Monton Yes. These drawings were not easy to obtain in good resolution, but they allow us to study this remarkable ship in detail and to truly understand how she was designed and built. I am sharing these plans primarily for ship modelers, as well as for anyone interested in historical naval architecture. If you are looking for a step-by-step -step construction of a scale model of Monton Yes, you will find a link to that dedicated video in the description below. Here, however, our focus is on plans and design. We will take a close look at the ship's overall layout, her hull lines, deck arrangement, gun placement, and structural elements that defined a Spanish 74-gun ship of the late 18th century. The 74-gun Spanish warship Montañez was designed during a true renaissance of Spanish shipbuilding. She was built under the direction of José Romero and Fernando de Landa, whose ambition was clear, to create a 74-gun ship that could match the speed of the best French warships, traditionally the fastest at sea, rival British firepower, and at the same time offer superior seaworthiness and stability. To achieve this, the designers introduced a fundamental change in hull form. Spanish warships had long been known for their rather full, rounded hulls. With Montañez, this tradition was deliberately broken in favor of sharper, more streamlined lines, aimed at improving speed and handling. At first glance, the hull shows full and smooth shapes at the bow and stern, giving the ship volume and buoyancy where it was most needed. However, in the underwater body near the midship section, the widest point of the hull, the lines narrow sharply and become noticeably finer. This combination was highly unusual for the period. The ship was built around a long, straight keel with moderate dead rise, which provided excellent directional stability and allowed Montañez to hold her course and sail closer to the wind than many of her contemporaries. In the central part of the hull, the frames are set at a steep, almost vertical angle. Below the waterline, this creates a flatter and sharper cross-section, significantly reducing hydrodynamic resistance and contributing directly to higher speed. The stem was slightly raked, rather than forming a vertical table bow. This subtle inclination improved the ship's ability to climb into oncoming waves, reduced spray, and helped keep the deck strier in heavy seas. At the stern, Montañez featured a rounded, Barton-style stern, complete with large stern windows and a gallery. This design was not only elegant, but also stronger and lighter than the flat, square transoms commonly used on contemporary French ships. Taken together, these hull characteristics gave Montañez exceptional performance for a ship of her class. She was fast, dry, and steady in a seaway. The broad upper works and full topside lines provided a stable gun platform, while the refined underwater shape allowed her to move through the water with remarkable efficiency. In her hull and lines, Montañez represents one of the most advanced Spanish interpretations of the classic 74-gun warship. The handling of the 74-gun warship Montañez was carefully engineered. At the heart of her maneuverability was a large rudder with an expanded blade area, giving the ship a noticeably quicker response to the helm than many ships of her class. The rudder was controlled by a wheel and tiller system using steering ropes, with the main wheel located on the quarterdeck. In case the primary wheel was damaged in action, Montañez was also equipped with a secondary, emergency steering arrangement, ensuring the ship could still be controlled under battle conditions. Like all classic 74-gun ships, Montañez carried a three-masted square rigged sail plan. Her rig consisted of the foremast, mainmast, and mizzenmast, all made from carefully selected pine and designed to support a powerful spread of canvas. Each mast carried three tiers of yards for square sails, along with additional lower yards for courses and top sails. 
This traditional yet refined rig allowed the ship to make effective use of light winds, while in strong and steady breezes she could compete in speed even with fast frigates. The running and standing rigging of Montagnes was carefully calculated to distribute loads evenly across the hull. Handling the sails of a ship this size was a demanding task, often requiring between 150 and 200 men working simultaneously during major maneuvers. The combination of a sharp underwater hull and a large sail area made Montagnes highly responsive to the helm. She answered the rudder quickly and maintained good control under sail, but like all ships of the line, complex maneuvers demanded a skilled and disciplined crew. Although Montagnes is officially classified as a 74-gun ship of the line, in practice she often carried close to 80 guns. This reflected both Spanish naval doctrine and the ship's strong, well-designed structure, which allowed her to support a heavier armament without compromising stability. The ship's artillery was distributed across several decks, following the classic layout of a two-decked ship of the line. On the lower gun deck, or gun deck, Montagnes carried 28 heavy 36-pounder long guns. These were her primary battery, intended to smash through the hulls of enemy ships at close and medium range. The 36-pounder was among the most powerful naval guns of its time and gave Spanish ships a fearsome reputation in line of battle combat. On the upper gun deck, or upper deck, the armament consisted of 30 24-pounder guns. This secondary battery provided a high volume of fire and was effective both against enemy hulls and rigging. Additional guns were mounted on the quarterdeck and forecastle. Here, Montagnes typically carried 16 lighter 8-pounder guns, supplemented by 2 to 4 light 24-pounder carronades. The carronades were a relatively new innovation for the Spanish Navy at the time. Short-barreled and devastating at close range, they were designed for brutal, short-distance engagements, inflicting heavy damage on enemy crews during boarding actions or close-quarters combat. All guns were mounted on robust wooden carriages, equipped with a carefully arranged system of breaching ropes and tackle blocks to control recoil and allow rapid run-out after firing. Spanish shipbuilders paid particular attention to the strength of the deck beams and under-deck structures, ensuring that the hull could absorb the tremendous recoil of heavy artillery during sustained action. Taken as a whole, the armament of Montagnes combined raw striking power with flexibility. She was fully capable of standing in the line of battle, delivering crushing broadsides, and adapting to close-range combat when the fight demanded it. Life aboard the 74-gun warship Montagnes was demanding, crowded, and unrelenting. Her crew numbered between 6 and 700 men, including sailors, marine infantry, officers, and a wide range of skilled specialists. Ordinary seamen and petty officers slept in canvas hammocks slung on the lower and upper gun decks. These hammocks hung directly above the guns and were taken down and stowed in nettings along the ship's sides during the day, clearing space for work and combat. Personal space was almost non-existent, barely half a meter per man, making the conditions extremely cramped. Food was prepared in the galley, located deep in the ship on the orlop deck, close to the keel. Here, meals were cooked in a massive copper kettle. The daily diet consisted mainly of heart tack, beans, lentils, salted pork or beef, cheese, and wine or water. The rations were filling, but monotonous and nutritionally poor, especially during long voyages. The crew operated on four-hour watches, day and night. Daily tasks included scrubbing the decks, repairing rigging, handling sails, endlessly cleaning and greasing the guns, and pumping water from the bilges. In rare moments of rest, sailors might gamble, play music, or mend their personal belongings. Officers, lieutenants, navigators, the purser, and other specialists, lived under different conditions. They occupied small cabins on the quarter deck and in the stern area of the upper gun deck. A typical cabin was a tiny space, 
separated by simple wooden or canvas partitions, furnished with a bed rather than a hammock, a sea chest, and, if space allowed, a small folding table. Officers dined separately, and their meals were prepared by a dedicated cook. Their diet was noticeably better and could include fresh meat, vegetables, wine, and even chocolate. While still Spartan by modern standards, their quarters and lifestyle reflected rank and status, and many officers were attended by a personal servant or ship's boy. The captain and senior command staff enjoyed the most comfortable accommodations on board. The captain's cabin was located in the stern on the lower gun deck, beneath the richly carved stern balcony and large windows. By shipboard standards, it was spacious and well appointed, featuring a dining area, a chart table, a bed set into an alcove, and even a small fireplace for heating. This cabin served both as a command center and private living space. Behind it lay the stern gallery, used for rest, observation, and as a visible symbol of prestige and authority. The officer's wardroom, located aft on the upper gun deck, functioned as a shared space where officers ate together, discussed plans, and socialized. It was the social heart of the ship's officer corps. Sanitary conditions reflected the rigid hierarchy of life at sea. The captain and officers had primitive privies, simple seats with openings leading directly overboard, built into the bow or stern structures. For the crew, facilities were far more basic, open grating platforms at the bow, exposed to wind and sea. Life aboard Montagnes was harsh and unforgiving, but every space, from the lowest deck to the captain's cabin, was designed to serve one purpose. To keep a powerful ship of the line functioning, fighting, and surviving at sea. Why was Montagnes unique? The 74-gun warship Montagnes became a benchmark because her designers achieved something rare, an almost perfect balance. A balance between speed and seaworthiness, between strength and firepower, and between innovation and tradition. Her speed and handling were the direct result of revolutionary hull lines, sharper and more refined than those of earlier Spanish ships. These lines allowed Montagnes to move efficiently through the water, perform well in light winds, and remain fast and controllable in heavy seas. At the same time, strength and firepower were never sacrificed. The ship was built with the traditional Spanish emphasis on robust construction, using dense tropical hardwood from Cuba. This gave the hull exceptional durability and allowed her to carry heavy artillery, including powerful 36-pounder guns, without compromising structural integrity. As a fighting ship, Montagnes outperformed many of her contemporaries. She could hold her place in the line of battle, deliver devastating broadsides, and maneuver with confidence where older designs would struggle. Her reputation was so strong that it extended even to her enemies. After the Battle of Trafalgar, where Montagnes was one of the few Spanish ships to emerge with honor, British sailors who inspected her spoke with genuine respect. Montagnes was a ship ahead of her time, a clear demonstration of what Spanish naval architecture could achieve at its peak. In the history of the Spanish Navy, Montagnes stands as a symbol of balance, innovation, and excellence. Thanks for watching.